Welcome back to Main Street Living. Now, Cheryl, I know that you got to do something recently that was this pretty exciting and, and exclusive, and you got to meet one of your heroes in the process. I can't believe it. It was really cool. It was a small, social distance, safe weather conference, less than 15 people, called Operation Sierra Storm. It took place in the South Tahoe area of Lake Tahoe, Nevada, also spanning into California. And at the Hard Rock hotel and casino in state line nevada i got the chance to interview al roker from the today show what? virtually yes Ooh. a look at this so now we're joining al roker and he is joining us virtually here at operation sierra storm in south tahoe nevada so happy to have you here wish you were here in person of course but al i'm curious as to your thoughts how you feel the weather industry has changed over the years in the past we used to just give a weather forecast but now we take on so many more roles and I think this is a great thing for educating the public, but can you elaborate a little bit on that? Well, you know, I've been very fortunate. Even back, I, I first started in 1974 at a television station in Syracuse. And uh, I didn't just do weather, I did reporting. I got to do, I, I, I had a vegetable garden that I was growing. Uh, we talked about the change from, uh, <laughs> it never seemed to take off, uh, from uh, uh, you know, going from Fahrenheit to Celsius, the metric conversion that America never quite seemed to embrace. So uh, I, I've always been very fortunate that I've been able to do other things besides weather, but they're always been science-based. And, and I think that's uh, one of the roles of, of, uh, of, of the broadcast meteorologist now uh, to you know, because so much of what we do touches on so many other parts of other people's lives. So uh, I think to that extent, it, it's it's a wonderful time. Look, the, when I first started, uh, you drew on a map on the studio, or, or you, it was a magnet uh, uh, that you'd put magnetic symbols. And the satellite imagery was uh, at least 12 hours old because it was on a film loop that had been sent from the National Weather Service. Uh, uh, in 1982, I think it was, uh, I got my first weather computer in, in uh, Cleveland, Ohio, at WKYC. It was an Apple IIe computer. It could display 16 colors and it could show 12 graphics. And now the sky's the limit. I cannot imagine having to forecast in Syracuse with equipment like that because my first job was also in Syracuse and it's hard enough when you have technology to forecast there. So it's, it's very interesting. And I actually got into meteorology because of my love for snow. Did you share that as well? No, I, you know, I didn't. I really, I, you know, I got a job doing weather that was, our department chairman said, whatever job you're offered, take it and then figure out what you want to do. I wanted to be a director or a producer. I didn't want to be, I didn't, my department chairman told me after my first uh, 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 television performance class, he said, you know, Roker, you've got the perfect face for radio. Oh. Uh, so I, I didn't really, uh, now that said, he's the one who put me up for my first TV job. But uh, I, I had no plans and, and as I said, before I took the class in meteorology, other than wanting to know whether it was going to rain or snow the next day, I, I could care less. But uh, I love that. It has, weather has been very, very good to me. And you're so real. And you have a great face for TV. Everybody loves the yeah. Al Roker glasses, which we all have here at the conference, except they're blue, not pink or orange or whatever color you're wearing today. But we'll have Coral. to uh, upgrade. Coral. OK, listen to that. And before we go, I've got one more question for you. Obviously, you're very into climate change, as am I. I think it's so important right now. What would you say to somebody who says, this doesn't affect me directly, or they don't think it affects them directly? What would you say to that person to open their eyes? Well, I think they need to look around, realize, you know, uh, are your, have your insurance rates gone up? That's probably mm -hmm. because of climate change. Uh, have, have your food costs gone up? That's probably because of climate change. Uh, 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 you know, is, is it harder to uh, uh, go to certain places? That's because probably of climate change. So, you know, uh, I think 
that's our job is to illuminate uh, the, the many ways, big and small, that our cl changing, changing climate uh, is affecting uh, average life in the United States and really all around the world. You're a wonderful advocate for climate change, weather, everything you do for this community. We all look up to you. Thank you so much for your time today, Al Roker, Operation Sierra Storm. We really appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> so guys, all right, this was really funny, okay? No, because, I see that you took away a lot from that interview. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But <laughs> the conference people, the, the PR agency, they actually got the blue Al Roker glasses for everybody. And so we all were wearing them when Al Roker came on. He could see us. And then instead of wearing his normal blue, he wore the pink glasses. And we're all going, no! <laughs> no. Nice, nice. It was, it was really amazing, though. I mean, he is such a role model for so many people. He does so much for the weather and climate industry. And we and were that's honored. so cool, Cheryl, that you both started in the same place, right? Syracuse? Both in Syracuse. Who knew? so crazy. Yeah. Yeah. Love my Al Roker. <laughs> wow. Wow. Well, uh, we definitely got more coming up on Main Street Living next. So you got to stick right there. I need some of those glasses too, Cheryl. Ooh.